presents in color California Salt with Stan Midgley. Good afternoon and welcome again to my good friend Stan Midgley. Sam lives near Pasadena, up on the, starting up toward the High Sierra, and uh, he goes all over the country, first making pictures, and falling off his bicycle and making everybody laugh, and generally contributing to the pleasure of living in modern America. How's that? Well, that's... Uh... That's the story that's of my damning, life. That's damning with faint <laughs> praise, I suppose you're saying. Well, anyhow, California is where we are today. California is the third largest state. What are the two larger ones? Well, uh, there's Alaska. That's two of them. That is, they claim it's twice as big as Texas. We'll put Texas in there. But California is the biggest in the number of people. And we kind of wish it wasn't. <laughs> Yes, and biggest in agriculture, biggest in a whole lot of things, and we'll start for California after this word. And now Stan Midgley, the Mark Twain on a bicycle, showing us his home state of California, and a good place to start would be Yosemite. Yes, uh, since I live in California, some of these pictures were taken last week, and some of them were taken as much as 30 years ago. But let's start in winter. This is January in California, and uh, we're specializing in Southern California right now. We had quite a lot of snow this year in our mountains. Uh, uh, you hear about the Los Angeles weather every time we have rain. It's kind of a joke all over the country, but what they usually don't tell you is that it's snowing in the same county. And you meet these interesting people up in the mountains after a snowstorm because we get very sticky snow. Snow in Colorado, for instance, usually comes powder dry and it doesn't stick all over the trees like this. Uh, once in a while it does, but uh, not like we get in Southern California in our mountains. Nearly every snow we get is sticky. So you'll get very pretty pictures after a snowstorm because everything is uh, uh, stuck up with snow. Now, one time I was going north about 300 miles on US 395. That's the road between Los Angeles and Reno. It's about 400 miles to Reno, but this is 300 miles north of Los Angeles when I came across this uh, section of highway for about three miles where a snowplow had been plowing the road a few weeks before and turned up a lot of these lumps. Then the sun had melted them into statuary. I've never seen anything like that before or since. It was positively funny for several miles. Look at the beezer on that guy, about a foot long. Most of these are three or four feet high, and put an eye there, and maybe you recognize some friend of yours, or enemy. But let's think about spring. Even in California, we're glad when spring comes along. And uh, you're just about 80 miles east of Los Angeles right here. That's Mount San Bernardino. It's uh, over 10,000 feet high. There's Mount San Jacinto from Cherry Valley, about 80 or 90 miles east of Los Angeles. And you notice how much more beautiful a California orange is than a Florida orange. You don't have any mountains in the background in Florida. And ours are really orange, too. We don't have to color our oranges to make them look like oranges the way they do in Florida. And ours are big. Go out and get an orange sometime like I do with my pickup truck. And it is that big. It's just as big as it looked there. This is Ojai, O-J-A-I, if you're looking for it on the map. It's the Spanish uh, spelling of an Indian name. And it means the nest in Indian. It's surrounded by mountains about 70 miles from Los Angeles, just inland from Ventura. It's a valley of orange groves, and this was the valley that they used to film that old film of Lost Horizon. They used the Ojai Valley to, to, for Shangri-La. It was the prettiest valley that uh, uh, Hollywood could think of about, what was that, 30 or 40 years ago when they made that classic of Lost Horizon. Now we go down to the ocean near Ventura. Those are sanderlings. A sanderling is a type of sandpiper. But it's different from your ordinary sandpiper, which is kind of a loner. The sanderling always runs in a bunch. Sometimes I've seen as many as 100 or 300 maybe in some bunches. 
but at least you'll always find five or ten and quite often fifty uh, running along piping the sand after every wave they just run in and out and they're in california in the winter time so if you go on a summer vacation you're not very likely to see the sandpiper unless you're up in northern california because they go on north of, up the pacific coast through the summer but they just run in and out in the waves and they never get caught in a wave i've watched them thinking they'll get caught like those bigger birds did right there but no just photographers and bigger birds get caught in the waves here's santa barbara the way it looks today and here's the way it looked uh, five years ago that's when they had the oil spill that uh, you remember uh, that's just about five years ago at the harbor of santa barbara it smelled around there the people of town seemed to be in a state of shock that this could happen to one of the prettiest and nicest towns and harbors in the world now if you go there today it's pretty well cleaned up here's a picture i took just this year uh, with a class from santa barbara college out there looking over the shore the uh, beach is a bit dark colored now compared to what it used to be the water is murkier than it used to be but it's getting that way all everywhere uh, uh, this world isn't what it used to be, but Santa Barbara is a pretty place again, and it doesn't smell of oil. But here's a picture I took uh, 25 years ago, the way it used to look back in the good old days of clear air before the smog. This wa there is a difference in this world. I just flew across America two days ago from California to get here, and this country is brown. When you look down on the air, it's brown from coast to coast. It isn't just Los Angeles that's smoked up. We're doing it to the whole world. Although I think a lot of the other countries of the world are responsible for that smog, too. It isn't just us. Matter of fact, there are some cities much worse than Los Angeles in foreign countries when it comes to making smog. But let's think about things that are more pleasant. This is Santa Bar. Uh, this is a Capistrano Mission. We have uh, 21 of these old Spanish missions in a line that runs 600 miles up the coast. That's the way the Spaniard colonized California, was building a mission about every one day's horseback ride. Next we go to Death Valley, the lowest spot in the western hemisphere. And after that, Stan has some rare sequences of California on the rocks. We'll be right back. What's the most uh, popular single attraction in California? I think Disneyland is. It's averaged over five million a year for over 20 years. I think I heard a figure of 130 million people have been to Disneyland. Is there any time you can go to California when it won't be overcrowded? It never seems too terrible. Well, I don't think it makes any difference what time of year. If you're around the freeways, it's overcrowded. But uh, uh, usually there's room in the motels any time of year. I, I like to go and keep driving till I'm ready to get off the road. And if I see something, I want to stop and have a look at it and all that. I hate to plan ahead. And you can do that most of the time, can you, in California? I would say don't worry about the time of year. Go anyway. Well, our time seems to be up, but we'll be back tomorrow at this same hour. We'll be going to Victoria, uh, Vancouver, and the Canadian Rockies by the left. Join us tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. for George Perot Presents.